This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE2301 statics. And actually, I'm talking about some basic properties of geometry that we're going to use throughout the class that I find a lot of students are just kind of rusty on and need a little refresher on it. It's going to be real quick. There's probably other concepts that I want to discuss later in another video, but right now I just want to talk about these three concepts. Uh, it's properties of parallel intersecting lines. Now you see I've drawn on the whiteboard two black lines that are parallel to each other and two red lines that are parallel to each other. And those form angles between those intersecting lines that bear a very consistent relationship that we're going to use in, in vector math and in, in other things of... Uh, any other problems that we have on in the, the class where we have parallel lines intersecting or one line intersecting a parallel two parallel lines so of course this this all this whole holds prop uh, holds forth for all these uh, common intersecting lines of that are parallel and then one that's intersecting them if I have an angle between this red line and the black line down here, this bigger than 90 degree uh, obtuse angle of A, then the opposite angle of it is A, and the complementary angles are angles B, and they are, of course, just 180 minus whatever the angle A is. Angle A looks like it might be about 105 degrees or something, so that makes B 75 degrees. Okay, so we need to be able to see that if this is angle A and that's angle A, then over here, if these lines are parallel to each other, this is A, A, you can see that relationship, and then where the B angles occur. So you need to be able to see that for various problems that we're going to have during the class. Another concept that we're going to use, and we just kind of assume that you know this because you do, but you're just rusty on it, is perpendicular intersecting lines. On this diagram I've shown the two black lines are perpendicular right angle to each other and the two red lines are perpendicular to each other. If they intersect at a point I'm going to have an angle between the red and the black of at this point C, angle C, and then the complementary angle or the uh, less than 90 um, angle D is going to be 90 minus angle C. And that relationship holds throughout the entire circle. If this is angle C, that's angle C, that's angle C, and that's angle C. So we're going to see this on friction problems. We have this concept of a normal force. A normal force is a perpendicular to a surface force. And um, we may see it in other problems throughout the class. So if... Um, this black angle is like say a 30 degree angle to the horizontal red line, the black line, excuse me. Then the angle, the line that's perpendicular to the black sloping surface it might be, that might be the normal force, is at a 30 degree angle to the vertical. So we'll talk more about this as the class goes along, but that's just the concept of perpendicular intersecting lines. Finally, I want to talk about briefly about similar triangles. We're going to use this in trusses, and there may be some other problems where we use this concept. Um, here I've drawn a, tri a big triangle and subdivided it into sections, and I've dimensioned it as you might see a truss dimensioned. I have six, what I call it, panels, or really I also have six similar triangles, and each space length here is 2 inches so 6 times 2 is 12 inches for the the big triangle A E J also we might give to you the dimension of this big side over here 5 inches and I've uh, lettered a few of the joints and uh, of course it's I'm sure it's all coming back to you now the relationship between these line lengths is all proportional. 
the length of AB is to FB the same length at the same proportion as AC to GC AD to HD and AE to JE so if we give you that AE is 12 inches 6 times 2 and JE is 5 inches then that relationship is AE over JE is 12 over 5 then I, if I know one of these other dimensions I can figure out what the the fourth dimension is, the missing dimension. So if I tell you, and we've shown here, AB is two inches, then I set uh, this proportion equation equal to each other. AB over FB is 12 over 5. So FB, I can just rearrange that and find out that FB is 0.833, whatever my unit is, I guess it's inches, isn't it? If I say AD is, what is AD? It's 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 times 2 or 8 inches. Then I put that into that same proportional relationship and I can figure that HD is 3.33 inches. So, in summary, I know these are all basic concepts, but it may have been years since you've uh, thought about them or talked about them. So it's going to be useful to remember these as we go through the course.